um, what you call the one thing you can already see from this question is that it's a one more question and it's after you've gone through all these other questions here and with yeah. functions and graphs that's the idea any question that they're going to ask you right if it's let's say right at the bottom here you will always make use of information um you'll always make use of information that has been worked out here like for example here let's see in the beginning they said we should show that g of x is equal to this equation fine and then coordinates of a and b you got that fine and then the range of f all the way until down here if you look here now they are saying hence they say determine, determine the equation of the tangent to f parallel to g so the equation of the tangent to f parallel to g i mean without even overthinking it oh wait sorry sorry i'm just getting this call mind if i just take it Whew, okay excuse me that was short but anyways okay. as i was saying them as i was saying with mm -hmm. with the with the with the previous question here you have to be very uh, careful with these kinds of questions because they always give you hints without even knowing it but after going through like multiple questions you'll start to see that you know what ne? whatever questions they ask they'll always be trying to help you with the other questions so if you look at where g is here right this is g at at 6.5 they spoke of a line that is a tangent to f but parallel to g so this blue line here is the tangent to f but parallel to g you see it okay yeah yeah now if you look at the, um, the what you may call the equation of this line here right one way or the other if you look at what we have for g here we can see that the x the y-intercept of g is a one over here and mm -hmm. then the y-intercept of this second line, I think, do you have it somewhere? The, the, y, the, the, the y, no, no, the y-intercept of this line here, 6.5. No, no. Okay, yeah. so if you don't have it, it's fine because yeah. we can actually just quickly work it out, you see, because here, what we already know is if you need to get the equation of this blue line, it's a straight line graph. So meaning you would have y is equal to mx plus c. Plus c. Mm. Yeah, so meaning we need the gradient and we can get the gradient. After getting the gradient, we need the point where the graph passes through. So we can just use calculus here. F, we need to get the gradient here, right? Of which, um, what we already know is that, let's see if anything else from the previous questions can help us know. So we need the gradient specifically at this point. Now, us getting the gradient specifically at this point, it's all a matter of using the gradient of G because they said these lines are parallel to, to each other, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So already we know that the gradient there is a one. Mm -hmm. So because we know the gradient here, it's going to be easier for us to get the coordinate there because we need the coordinate there to put in where x and y is so that we can get the y-intercept of the blue line mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. So getting the coordinate there, we can just use calculus because we have f of x, right? Mm -hmm. Now, because mm -hmm. we have f of x and we also have the gradient here. Remember, the gradient here is a 1. So we need a gradient equation to help us get the coordinate. And a gradient equation that we have is going to be the first derivative of our graph of f. So our first derivative of the graph of f is just 2x minus 2. Mm -hmm. Now, what we know is that we know that the gradient at this coordinate is a 1. So gradient, we're going to put a 1 there so that we can work out the specific x value where the gradient is a 1, you see because it's all about this point here. This is where we're gonna get all our information. So the gradient here is a one, we want the X value. So solving for X here, it's gonna be the two is gonna go over. This is gonna be a three. And then divide by two on both sides, X is gonna be equal to three over two, you see. So now you know the X value here 
is just 3 over 2. So because we know the x value is 3 over 2, we need the y value. And the issue with functions is always be comfortable to know that you can get information anywhere is, is, if you have what is required. Like if you want the y value here, I mean, luckily you already have the x value. So you can just throw the yeah. x value into this into equation. equation. Because, yeah, because you have information fully for that equation. So yeah. where x is, we can put 3 over 2 in that equation. So let us just do that quickly. So let's see here. In our equation there, uh, we're going to put, we, we just need to use our calculator now. Where x yeah. is 3 over 2 over there, squared minus, and then 3 over 2 over there, and then minus 3. And then the whole thing here, let's see what the calculator gives us. Mm, 3 over 2, squared. 3 over 2, and then minus 3. So it's negative 15 over 4, right? Yes. Yeah. Of which that makes sense because it's down here. So now mm -hmm. we have that y value, negative 15 over 4. Negative 15 over 4. So as long as we now have that coordinate, we can easily now use it to get the full the full equation of our straight line. And we can easily make use of this version of the formula, y minus y1, m, and then x minus x1. Are you familiar with this formula? Which one? Y, this, oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we just have a coordinate and a gradient. So here we can mm -hmm. then say um, y minus the value here, which is just gonna be a plus now. Gradient is a one, x value is three over two. And then if you solve y here, it's gonna be x minus three over two and then minus 15 over two. And then the final equation is just, let's see here. Minus three over two minus the 15 over two also. That's going to be a minus it's going to be 21. Pardon? 21 over 4. Negative 21 over 4. Negative 21 over 4. I'm getting a negative 9. Oh, I put a 2. It's supposed to be a 4. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a, a, a 4. Mm -hmm. There's not a 2 there. Yes. So let's see here. Over 4. Yeah, negative 21 over four. So now with what we have done at 6.5, 6 6.6 mm. 6 is going to make a bit more sense because look at 6.5 here, what we now know is that the y-intercept here is negative 21 over four. So let's write it out. This here, is negative 21 over four, which is roughly negative five over two five, which is fine. So now we know that this blue line here is parallel to G. If you look nicely, the X value, the Y intercept here is negative this value. The Y intercept there is a one. Now, if you look at the question for one mark, yeah. it's saying for which values of K, will this equation, which is the parabola, and this equation, which is just the straight line, um, which is h of x, they're saying, where will this graph and this graph not intersect? So obviously not intersect means, where will they not touch? You see, let's just put here, where will they not touch? You see, that's the question being asked here. Where will these two graphs not touch? But then the one thing you want to spot with this question is that it's all making use of question 6.5. Because if you look at the differences between the blue equation and the graph of G, like let's draw them next to each other here so that you can see the, 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 the differences directly. If you look at G of X, G of X is just X plus one. The Y intercept is a one. The new mm. equation we've got, it is just x minus 21 over 4. 
the y-intercept is negative to an one over four. The graph mm -hmm. they are talking about here is literally the same thing, but then it has a specific y-intercept. So do you see that for our previous two equations, the, the k value mm -hmm. here is a one, the k value here is 21 over four, and then mm -hmm. here it's left open, you see. Mm -hmm. And the one thing to take note of is that the k value here, you see here, this is just a y-intercept, y-intercept. So this is also going to be the y-intercept, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see that all these graphs have the same gradient, same gradient, same gradient, same gradient, you see? Yes. So as long as they have the same gradient, it's just a matter of looking at this blue line. This blue line has a specific y-intercept. Now, if you move this blue line upwards, the blue line, the y-intercept is being represented by k. So the way it is right now, k is negative 21 over 4. But then if you move it up, let's say until here, right? If you move it up until somewhere here, k is a 0. If you keep moving mm. it upwards until somewhere there, k is a 1. If you keep mm. moving it upwards, K is whatever this number is over there. So when you're looking at what we have, right, they are asking, what does the Y intercept need to be? Because you see the translation here for which values of K. So meaning what does the Y intercept need to be for this parabola to be touching this straight line graph? Of which if you look at the straight line graph and the parabola, there's the parabola and the straight line graph will touch if your y-intercept is between negative 21 over 4 all the way to infinity. You see, your, your, your y-intercept needs to be a y-intercept that is mm -hmm. above negative 21 over 4. Because as long as, OK, wait, no, I'm, I'm thinking of it the other way around. As long as the y-intercept is bigger than this number, your graph will always touch the parabola it will always touch it always and forever but then the moment you're thinking of moving this graph downwards where your y intercepts are smaller than this if you move this even just any any unit downward your straight line is not touching the parabola anymore if you keep mm. moving it down forever it will never touch the parabola of which mm. we can see the only thing that's changing there is the y intercept which is this k value that they're referring to so when they ask for which values of k will this equation and this equation not intersect, our answer needs to be our k value needs to be smaller than this. Because yeah. if k is smaller than this number here, your graph mm -hmm. will be having a y-intercept that causes it to not touch the parabola. That's why this is a one mark question. Because for one mark, you'll have to say k is smaller than negative 21 over 4. Okay. Yeah. So if it was the other way around, if they say for which values of k will this these two graphs intersect, then you will need to say that k needs to be bigger or equal to this number. Because if k is equal to this number, they are touching. If k is mm. bigger than that number, they'll always be touching. All the way until infinity, they'll always be touching. So that's that's the way you would want to answer these questions. It's never about the specific question that they're asking. It's usually mainly about the questions before it. And either mm -hmm. usually one, just one above it or even one or two above it. Of which here we, 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 we know that even when we were dealing with 6.5, we made use of all the way of, all the way to 6.1. We made use of 6.1 because we needed the gradient over there. So that's mm -hmm. also to just show that with your functions question, Whatever they ask, always use other information that you would have been given. Okay. Yeah. Nah. Oh. Perfect.